This video is an introduction to using branching within PowerPoint to make an interactive presentation. We will be using the hyperlink button and the action button. Usually to move from one slide to the next, we only have to click somewhere on the slide and it will move on. For most of our program, that will be not appropriate. We only want to move to the next slide on the appropriate clicking of a certain object or answer. In this first slide, it's no problem that we have the normal advance. We can find this advance in the animations menu and we find advanced slide on mouse click. This is fine for this slide. If we move to our second slide, here I have labeled the slide slide 2. Any name put into the title field here will turn up as a useful name to identify the slides uh, in our slide sorter and it will help us when we're using our hyperlinks to determine which slide we wish to go to. We have a question, in which country would we find the Eiffel Tower? And we wish to select one of these as an answer. What will happen is if we're in the presentation and we click anywhere in the slide, this would move to the next slide automatically, which is not something that we want to have happen. So we've taken the on mouse click and we have unclicked that. And we want to apply that to all the slides that we will find in the rest of our presentation so that we're not going to be able to move to the next slide uh, by clicking somewhere in here unless we click on a particular object that says OK, move on. However, we've applied this to all the slides, so slide 1 now has had that effect taken place. So we want to retick the on mouse click to the first slide so that it will be able to move on. Let's come back to slide 2 and we're now ready to move. So we're going to choose our correct answer here. This correct answer of France, we want to be able to praise the person and then be able to move on. Now in this case I have a series of slides at the end. I have a yes slide and a no slide. Well, we want to say yes for this particular answer. So we're going to click, come back to the insert menu and we have two options, the hyperlink and the action button. And we can also pick up the hyperlink by right clicking. The main difference is we're going to be hyperlinking, but if we use the action button, we get a little bit of extra facility in terms of being able to have an attached sound effect. So if I click here, we can find I still have a hyperlink that I can select, but I can play some sound with that as well. So I could choose to go to a particular slide, and I can find here now my slide titles, and I can find my yes and my no. My alternative was to use the hyperlink button, and I want to go to a place in this document and again I can find my slide titles here my yes and my no. Clicking yes I get to see a version of the slide in the preview and I can click OK. Now these two here are incorrect so I'm going to want them to hyperlink to no. And in this case hyperlink to the no. There is a show and return here, but uh, that can be a little complicated to use. It involves setting groups of slides, uh, and we will work on this in a slightly different way. So now, if I click on this, I will be taken to my yes answer, and if I click on either of these, I'll be taken to my no answer, and if I click anywhere else in the slide, nothing will happen. I won't move on which is quite good. So having clicked on my yes answer, I've come to this slide, I now need to be able to go back to be able to move on. Now what I'm wanting is for any answers to any of these questions to come to the yes or incorrect ones to come to the no and then be able to return to the original slide. So I want to come back to here. The way I can bring this back to the original slide uh, is to return to the previous or last viewed slide. Now to make this happen I want to be able to click on the slide and that will let me move. The easiest way to 
set this up is by creating a box. I'm going to draw it over the whole slide. I'm going to right click and I'm going to format my shape. And I'm just going to set the transparency to 100%. Now I have a box that I can click, I can hyperlink, and that will let me go back to a particular spot. But I'm going to use the action button in this case. Click on the hyperlink, and we'll find in this we have last slide viewed. So this will mean it will go back to the slide that sent it to this particular page. Now I can copy that box with Control c and I can put the same thing here on the No. So now this means that this is sitting over the top. Anytime I click anywhere on this page, it will automatically use that hyperlink via the Action button to return to the previous slide that it was viewed. So in this case, I've come from this slide. If I now make the answers to this go to my Yes and No, they will also cause the slide to return to this particular slide. Now the only problem I have here is I've come back to this slide, but I need to move to my next slide, whereas at the moment I can only go to yes, to no, and to no. So I've created an extra button here that will let me move on to the next slide. This button has been created through the Shapes menu as an Action button here, and this is Forward to Next, so if I click on that, drag it down, I'll create a new one, and now it is going to move on to the next slide, or I could uh, specify a particular slide that I want to work with. But in this case, the next is fine for me. So I've got two of those there at the moment. Well, I'm actually going to copy that one, or cut it, because I'll use it on my next down here, because I'll need one to move on from this slide. Now, when we're going to use these hyperlinks to move forward, what will happen is if I want a hyperlink on a text, I want this one in this answer in this case is correct to go to my yes, I find that I have the answer underlined and turned blue because that's the default for text hyperlinks within PowerPoint. To avoid having that happen, I can use a box, again a transparent box, which I can place over the top of my answer and I can set that as my hyperlink, in this case to a no, instead of having the hyperlink uh, changing the formatting of my text. So here I'm going to remove my highlighting, I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a shape, draw a shape out, right click, format the shape, and set my transparency to 100% and there I have a nice little box that I can use. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to hyperlink that to my yes answer. Okay, so now we have the link. It's sitting on top of the text, uh, and I can click anywhere in this button, and it will move me on. This one here, let's copy that and paste it and we can have that sitting over the top of our other incorrect answer. This will let me move on to my next slide, which is this one here. Here I've taken uh, preset shapes as buttons, and I've used those for my text. So I've used this basic shape tool, drawn my button, double-clicked on it to enter some text, and then I have my button ready for a hyperlink to work from. So a very simple procedure to be able to move through the different forms. Let's have a look at this in action. Here's my branching. I've clicked anywhere. Now I click anywhere and nothing happens. If I click on my correct answer, I get yes. I click again and I have returned. No. And return. And then I move to my next slide with this button. Again, my yes will take me to the yes and my incorrect answer takes me to a no, and I can move on to my next slide. Here we haven't set a hyperlink yet, so I get no action. Also, I have not yet put the button to move on to the next slide, so I can't move yet.